Hello everyone, what's up? Prince1215 here with a channel update video. So as I'm recording this, it is December the 29th, 2019. Tomorrow, the day that this video is going up, is the 30th. The day after that is the 31st, and the day after that is the year 2020. So, with that, there are some changes coming to YouTube. You probably know what they are. Um, if you're not, if you, if you don't know what those are, that is the COPPA law, or COPPA, however you want to pronounce it, I'd say COPPA. It's like, you're not going to take me alive, COPPA. That's, I'm tempted to name the video that, but I'm not. Um, and, uh, so, I mean, if, if you follow LEGO YouTubers on YouTube, then you probably know that, that, that it's going to bring some big changes. Um, and I am, of course, I'm going to be affected by those changes. I have not talked about them. Yet. I have not talked about COPPA yet on my channel. Um, and considering that it's like T minus two days away from uh, really hardcore affecting me, uh, I, I should probably talk about it. Um, before I do, though, I do want to quickly look over my 2019 in terms of the channel because the things that happen this year are going to affect how I do things next year in accordance with of COPPA and how that's going to affect me and everything. So 2019 was a, was a pretty good year. It was a pretty good year um, for a multitude of reasons. First of all, I released and completed the second season of LEGO Bionicle Reiterated. That is all up right now, so you can watch the first two seasons right now. Um, and it was as much as I still uh, as much as I still enjoy the first season um, the second one was a vast improvement because I really had an idea of what I was doing where with the first season I mean in terms of story writing I knew what I was doing but in terms of the production of the technical stuff that needed to happen for the first season I had no do I had no idea what I was doing no clue whatsoever with the second season I had more things under I had things more under control and so it just turned out to be a better product because of that um, partially because of stuff I did but also coincidentally because of what other people did um, everyone on my cast I think if they didn't have a great mic to begin with they upgraded whether or not that was a coincidence or it was something that they did um, because of the show I'm not sure but it seemed like everyone upgraded their mic I upgraded my mic um, so all around the second season was was just better, especially visually because um, the voice of Pohatu and basically everyone from the Stone Tribe, Jitil, he did a lot of artwork. He did a lot of artwork for the show, and and you can de and it's definitely an improvement over my shoddy stuff that I did for the first season. Um, and that and that was always the plan from the beginning is that after the first season, you know, and I've got I've got some good people attached to the project. I to start outsourcing some of the some of the workload on to other people to hopefully make it better than what I could do on my own and that's exactly what happened with the with the artwork that Jitil worked on which consisted of mostly all the main locations for the show um then so they pop up a lot during during the second season and they'll pop up a lot during the third season as well um and so it it, was, it just it marked a vast visual improvement that I really enjoy going back to watch so I released that. Um, I did honestly. Bionicle was really the only type of stop motion stuff I released in 2019. So, uh, which was kind of odd thinking about that because usually I do some sort of something besides the main series I'm working on. Like in 2018, uh, it saw the release of the 45th Attack Battalion and a couple episodes of Troopers. While 2019. While I worked on some episodes of Troopers, I have not actually finished those episodes yet in terms of filming because I've been busy with other stuff, including school and then other filming projects, and so there's been no Troopers this year at all. Um, that is something that I think I'm going to get to next year for sure in 2020, so Troopers will be returning in 2020. I can announce that now. Um, not having any Troopers in 2019 was a... Uh, was not intentional. I wanted to do more troopers because you know, I even started filming more troopers, but then other stuff just kept coming up, and I have such limited time because of college to actually film stuff that I had to prioritize other things, such as the third season of Reiterated. Um, so because so because of that, my actual stop motion releases were very limited in 2019, which is unfortunate. But I feel like in the grand scheme of things, it's gonna mean that the stuff I do release is of a higher quality. Um, the th Basically, the only other stop motion thing I released aside from Reiterated Season Two was uh, a 
short Lego Star Wars thing that I did called uh, Capital Supremacy, which is based on the Capital Supremacy game mode from Star Wars Battlefront 2. Mainly, that was a test of new special effects that I'm going to be using in, pro in projects going forward to kind of test out to see how that stuff will work, and I think it's going to work well. I kind of got an idea for how to properly do that stuff with the test run with Capital Supremacy and also kind of made that video to... Uh, while it was also a special effects test run, essentially it was also very much dedicated to the team at DICE, at EA, because they pour their heart and their soul into Star Wars Battlefront 2, despite what, um, despite the world basically hating on them because of how the game actually didn't launch, but I've talked about that on, on different live streams and stuff in terms of gaming. Um, so I won't really go into that here. But, yeah, uh, so I released that, and that was basically it for stop motions. Um, the last couple of weeks, I've been releasing, like, little little promos for the Toa characters for Re Reiterated to start advertising the, the, the finale. That'll be coming next year. Um, and so I guess you can technically count those, but it's not new footage. It's all old footage that I'm ju I've just put into these kind of little short character reels compilation things. So I don't really count those, but those have been releasing too. Um, but that's not the only LEGO content I did this year. I released a lot of reviews, a lot of reviews, because um, I got in like the back half of 2018, I got several LEGO sets, like upwards of like six or seven LEGO sets that I, you know, I built them, I put them on the shelf and everything. I'm like, oh, I'll get around to reviewing that soon. And then, of course, I had to go to college, so I didn't have time to review them. So I kind of had this this backlog of Lego sets that I owned that I hadn't gotten around to reviewing. And so that, on top of stuff I got for Christmas and birthday, since my birthday is very close to Christmas. Well, technically speaking, it's actually very far away from Christmas, considering my birthday is in January and Christmas is in December. But since the year loops, <laughs> it kind of feels like I have Christmas, then I have my birthday, then I gotta wait another year, whole year for both. But uh, so on top of the stuff that I got for Christmas and birthday, I had a lot of review stuff, and then there's and then there and because of that, I had basically a review almost every week for like the first half of the year. I didn't run out until uh, I didn't run out of reviews until I think like June or July of this year, which meant I released something like twenty five reviews this year between Lego sets that I got and tra different Transformers and stuff like that because um, I still collect Transformers because I like the toys. I think they're cool. Um, so, yeah, this is that kind of that, – that was a nice little bolster of content for the channel this year, which was fun <laughs> because, because, you know, by the time I ran out of – by the time I ran out of reviews in, like, March or April, I had gotten other stuff and then, and then spring break rolled around and then I had a chance to – review to review more stuff and so I and so I had a backlog I feel I completed the backlog but then in the time it took me to complete the backlog I'd built up another backlog which then allowed me to to clear that backlog so yeah for like the first half of the year I, re I released a review like every week for like half the year almost so I, I didn't realize that until we were midway through like May I'm like have I released a review every week this year so far wow so uh so there were a lot of Lego reviews that went up uh several Transformers reviews stuff like that but uh I think the biggest thing and those of you that are that have are probably somewhat new to the channel this is probably what you're here for something big that was unintentional for me this year was that I've sort of kind of started dipping my toe into the Lego Ninjago community um, I've said it before in other videos especially if you've been watching those Ninjago videos you know by now but for those that haven't I've always liked Ninjago. I would I watched the pilots on Cartoon Network when they were released in like January of 2011. So I've been there from essentially day one. I've never I was never too much of, of a fan of the sets up until like when the movie wave launched because those sets were just wow. But um, but I've always been a fan of the story and the characters and everything uh, all throughout its ups and downs. And you guys know my opinions on that by now. Um, so early like in February of this year, uh, they put basically all of Ninjago up until Hunted. Hunted was the last season, so season nine, they put 
all the other seasons that they hadn't up until that point put they put it on Netflix. So I thought, man, it's been years since I've seen some of this stuff. Let's go back and rewatch it, especially since March of the Oni had just happened. So it's like, let's let's start from the beginning and go back through all of it again. So I did that, and that was and that was a fun journey to go all the way through the seasons and stuff that I thought maybe wasn't that great before to kind of looked at it in a new light and stuff that I thought was good before, like, oh, that wasn't as good as I thought, and then stuff that I thought was terrible the first time around just became more and more terrible looking at you rebooted. So, yeah, uh, so when I got done doing that rewatch, I'm like, well, what was, so there's 10 seasons of this show now. What's, what are the best seasons? You know, maybe, you know, so I, I came up with this idea, let's do a one-off top 10 video, and that was it, really. I didn't have any other plans aside from that. I, I made my top 10 list, what I thought was, was the 10 seasons ranked in order. I put the video together, I got the B-roll in there, I edited it, I uploaded it, and then I forgot about it. Really, I I didn't literally forget. It was like, oh, I forgot I made that, but I didn't think about it. I didn't think I, I would get comments every now and then, but I didn't. It didn't really hit me how many views that video was getting. And then I was doing a scroll through, and so I uploaded that top ten video in April. And then I was doing a scroll through of my videos from of from like because it was about the time I realized, I'm, oh, I've I've released. Uh, a review like every week this year and about the time that came to a halt when I actually ran out of stuff to review and I was going through and looking at all those videos and I came across that top 10 video again and I realized it had something like 3,000 views I'm like holy cow now I think it's up to almost 12,000 somewhere in that range 11 to 12,000 somewhere which is ludicrous I can't believe that that's just one of those moments that's just one of those moments where where the uh, where the algorithm gods shined brightly upon me and pushed that video to uh, to lots of people, uh, I guess. I don't know. I guess the title was just clickbaity enough because, you know, it's well, it's, it's a top 10 list. Top 10 lists always do well for whatever reason. I mean, I feel I myself am, am more inclined to cl- uh, click on a top 10 list video whenever I see them. So, so I was like, well, obviously... <laughs> I have to capitalize on this. So then I made my top 10 episodes video. And then naturally from there, I made the worst episodes video. And both of those did very well. Um, uh, Not as well as the original video, but still very well considering. And so, you know, I started, now I've kind of started to build a little following in the Ninjago community. I've got people, you know, leaving comments on these videos and discussing things, stuff like that, which hasn't, which I've had the occasional hit here and there. Um, my big film from 2013, Transformers vs. the Ghost Star Wars Revenge of the Fallen, that got over 100,000 views in like nine months of it being out. So I think that's a, a verified hit. Um, it's not a viral hit, but it, you know, it's not a viral video, but it's still, still a very successful video. Um, I did, there's a stop motion recreation of the police interrogation scene from the first Lego movie with Bad Cop and Emmett. That has a substantial amount of views. Um, when Bionicle 2015 was announced, I did kind of this little reaction video in quotes, it, but it was characters, you know, like the actual Bionicle characters reacting to the fact that it was back, and I did that. And of course, you know, releasing that when I did, right with that announcement, you know, it kind of hit the, it kind of got caught up in, in the hype momentum the hype train that everyone else got caught in so that's somewhere in like the 40,000 view range so I mean I've had very successful videos in the past but I don't but I don't really think that I've had but in terms of viewer retention with the exception of like that bionicle one um I haven't really had the viewer retention or in, or viewer interaction that I've had like I've had with these Ninjago videos which has been great so obviously I've been capitalizing on that um and then that kind of brings me to something that I want to talk about in terms of next year. So um, a comment I get occasionally on those Ninjago videos is people saying, and I'm not ca- I'm not calling anyone out because honestly, you're absolutely you guys the people that are saying this. I think it may not actually be multiple people, maybe just the same person over and over. I'm not getting on to you or anything because you're absolutely right. Um, the, the, this one person or these people, whoever they keep, they keep commenting, you know, stop doing other videos, only make Ninjago content because those videos don't do well, but your Ninjago content does, you know, you're going to, you're not going to have, you're not going to find one singular unified audience. If you make all this various content, you need to focus on, I, I'm paraphrasing now going much longer than the comment is but that's the message that's the message is you need to focus on this one type of content because this is what the most people like you for 
I agree with that wholeheartedly. But, and here's the but, this is the reason I don't do that, is that for a large amount of time, my channel would kind of be dead for a bit. Because the thing about my Ninjago videos that I like about them, and one of the things I think other people like about them, is that they're very well thought out. I go over my reasonings for things. I mean, a big example of that is the fact that I actually did Ninjago reiterated, uh, rebooting, rebooted, because I hate that. I hate re. I hate rebooted. I don't like that season. I think it made so many mistakes and messed up some characters so bad that I, I really thought that Ninjago was dead. It's like, oh, this. They brought it back from the dead, but was it worth it? Because this story is just tarnishing everything that's come prior. And then we got three fantastic seasons after that. So. I digress, but uh, that was really the whole reason I did. I one of the reasons I did that is because I want to present my well thought out thoughts on this season, why it's bad, and how to fix that, and how to fix the changes. Because I've said in those videos, I've, I'll say it again: I'm not a negative person. I'm a very positive person. I've I always try to look for the good in things. If that means talking about this thing, it's like, well, maybe you could have done this differently, and this what this would have been a cool idea, and it could have played into this. The kind of the storytelling things like that. That's why I started doing Bionicle reiterated, and then that's what, and it's partly what led to the natural uh, natural conclusion to start doing Ninjago reiterated f to you know rebooting rebooted. So, but so those videos are all very thought out, and because of that, it takes time. It takes time to work on those videos. I have to think about them before I even start typing things on a on a Word document to start putting the videos together in just a script. Once I've done that, then I actually have to write them. That takes time. Then I have to debate with myself. Like in the top tens, I go back and forth on decisions. And you know, it's like where you know where where does this list you know does is does this list actually work? Does it stand up to the reasonings I'm giving? Giving okay, maybe it doesn't in the way it is now. Maybe I need to flip this around, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It takes time to work on these videos. It takes a lot of time to work on these videos, almost as much as um. Now I'm not no not it's not even uh, not even a stop motion. It's not even it takes way longer to work on a stop motion because first I have to come up with the actual story. I have to write the story. Then I have to film it, and then sometimes that also requires getting the toys required to film it. And then you know there's having to even find time to film it because I'm in college. And I'm five hours away from my filming studio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, but it's still regardless. It takes time to work on these Ninjago videos. It takes a lot of time. So I can't just I can't put one out every week. And just go, you know, it's like, uh, I can't, like, I'm never going to do a video going, and it's like, you know, why, why Nia, uh, I'm trying to think of a random topic idea, you know, it's like, well, why the color gray is, is, does not fit Nia's character, it's actually degrading, it's something, you know, something silly like that, that really doesn't have any merit or basis to it, it's just like, well, here's content for you guys to watch, because I feel like if I start doing that, then that's going against the reason that you guys like my Ninjago videos to begin with, is that they are well thought out. And so that's the reason I do other stuff on the channel, why I do stop, because first and foremost, it doesn't feel like it, but it is, the, tr the, the channel is stop motion based. And I know that sounds weird, especially for you newcomers, but the channel is stop motion based. I started this channel on the idea that I'd make brick films, these Lego stop motions, and and try to be like the and ooh this is a deep cut for some of you out there because you probably may not have ever heard of these people but to be the next pizza movies or the next next Bugastu or the next just super nine these these big brick filmers in the in the community and by big brick filmers I mean they have ten thousand subscribers oh my gosh um, actually at this point I think I may have surpassed just super nine's original subscriber count back in the day. I think he was he was actually surprisingly low compared to other Brick filmers out there. So I think at this point it may have actually surpassed him. I don't know. It's been forever since I've even checked his channel because a lot of these a lot of these large brick filming channels they've been dead for ages because you know they got old. They went to college. They couldn't find the time, and so they just stopped. Um, and then they haven't and they haven't been back since. And I swore I would I would never ever do that. I would keep making stop motions up until the point where it was literally no longer feasible for me to do so. Um, whether that means I, you know, find someone to live my life with and start a family and raise kids, where and I have to provide for them, 
and so all of my free time is spent with them and so if, if, so if you know like in 10 years I'm a father and stuff and I don't have time then that's going to be when I decide to call it quits but now when I'm single definitely nowhere <laughs> no, I'm not going to be in a relationship anytime soon folks no way I'm <laughs> that's not happening so that's not going to be a problem for a long time I don't think um but but you know I the only my only obstacle is just is just time with college and getting a degree and stuff because stop motion is what led me to even pursuing the degree I'm pursuing, which is filmmaking or just some videography, stuff like that. So I'm always, so I started the channel with the idea that I was always going to try to do something. And so, so these college years have really been dedicated to Bionicle Reiterated because of the way Bionicle G2 ended on a very unsatisfying note. And then, and then I've got, and I'm working on a new series to come out after Bionicle's wrapped up. Um, which will be announced sometime soonish. I don't know. It may be March or later by the time that's um, by the time that's announced. But I've got seven of the ten episodes in the first season filmed. I'm going to film the next three here in the next month while I'm home from college. Um, so that'll be coming. But I realize I quickly realized back in the day when I was doing these stop motions as as my skills progressed and stuff that it became impossible for me to make the to release a stop motion like every week or something that I needed time off to work on school or I needed time to develop the ideas you know to even film them because I because I've started to hone my my skills and get better and the animation became better and better but it took longer and longer because it, the quality of it was higher because there's more frames and stuff and I was also just going through batteries on my camera like nobody's business so um so I that was when I really kind of started to branch out and do video game stuff because by the time I realized this I I've been doing the channel for five years at this point but by the time I realized this yeah you know, that was around the launch of the PlayStation Four you know this current uh, this current console generation we're in right now and in the Xbox One and the PS4 and now the Nintendo Switch it comes with a built-in capture card which before then that was you know you had to pay like a hundred upwards of a hundred or two hundred dollars to get a capture card for your PS3 or your PC or something like that we did not have a powerful enough PC for me to do PC gaming so that was just that was that was just inconceivable it was not possible but then with the built-in capture card and the PS4 I can now play Battlefield 4 have fun and then and then capture the funny moments of me, you know, like flying up, flying a plane into a tank, and then floating down, dropping C4 on the battlefield, and blowing myself up, and not actually killing anyone, and just having this grand, hilarious fail. I can now capture that, put it in a video with other moments like it, and upload that. And like little, th at the time, at the time, these little bite-sized three to four minute funny moments in video games videos were very big. So I started doing that, and I wasn't doing it to try to for it to become the new main source of content on the channel. I was doing it just to put content on the channel. And so that's, and so that I still do that to this day, just so that way it's not dead for three fourths of the year. So that way there's at least something coming out at some point. Um, you all that have been following me for a little while, you probably at this point know that my content schedule is pretty much Mondays and Fridays. Sometimes I might miss a Monday, but I never miss a Friday. So unless, of course, I decide to take a week off, which I'll say, which I'll announce on Twitter, and I'm going to get into that stuff here in a moment. So that's why I've always done the multiple, multiple. There's always been multiple facets to my channel, and that's why I'm not exactly too worried about Kappa. So now it's time to talk about the Bantha in the room, and that is Kappa. Um, as I said at the top of the video, you guys probably know about it. Um, if you don't, go educate yourself. Uh, I recommend going to Jang Bricks and watching his videos. He's got a number of videos on it and the trials and tribulations that have gone, this, this ongoing saga that is Kappa. But to boil it down, basically, um, because of things that happened, YouTube is now, well, yeah, YouTube is forcing people, because the law is forcing people um, to to mark their videos as made for kids if it falls under a myriad of guidelines of what constitutes children's content. 
most of the stuff I do on the channel falls underneath that. So what does that mean for you guys, the viewers? Well, that means that you are no longer going to get push notifications. So if you're logged into YouTube on your mobile device and you're at Subway, you know, getting lunch, so to speak, and I upload a video um, or I start live streaming, then you are not going to get a notification on your device that says that I've just uploaded a video or I've started to live stream. You're not going to be getting those notifications for a video that is marked made for kids. Now, if I'm live streaming, say, Rainbow Six Siege, which is a game that is rated M for Mature, then that notification will go out because that is not children's content. That is an M-rated game where people say the F word and blood go and there's gunshots and blood splatters and all sorts of violent imagery, which is definitely not made for kids, but it is somehow advertiser friendly. YouTube is weird nowadays. Um, so that so you know, funny moments in Rainbow Six Siege videos will continue, of course, and you'll get notifications when I upload those. But when I make a well thought out expose on Ninjago and why I feel the future of Ninjago is in safe hands and season 11 whatever problems it encountered was was maybe sure a misstep but it shows promise you know that runs for 15 to 20 minutes you're not going to get that notification not only are you not going to get that notification but it seems like it's not also it's also not going to show up in your subscribe box at the same time, those videos aren't going to be showing up in the recommended feeds. So when you're watching a video on whether on a mobile device or on a desk desktop, you know when you're on the you know, you, you know what YouTube looks like. You've got you've <laughs> you're watching this on YouTube right now. So if you've got it full screen, you know exit full screen. You know you're so you're watching the video, and you've got the video, and then to your right you've got all the different you've got all the different other videos you could watch that are maybe similar or YouTube thinks you might also like based on what you've watched and the cookies and stuff. Um, yeah, w when a thing is marked ma children's content, my vi yeah, that video will not show up on the side there. It will not show up in the recommended section. Basically, they're going to make it as difficult as possible for you to actually find that video. In some ways, it almost seems like they're trying to snuff out this kind of content on YouTube altogether because they because because let's face it the internet is not the way it was in the 90s but at the same time it's still kind of wild west in certain areas it's just so unruly at times that you cannot predict what will go up on your site so and be, and because of the vast amount of users that are on the site they they just cannot they cannot police everything so they're making it as difficult as possible for you to actually abuse the rules. Um, and so part of that means that they're going to be essentially, they're not actually, but they are essentially blocking children's content on YouTube. So, um, and then from another point of view and from another, another perspective, that also means that people are going to be losing a lot of m major monetization on these videos. So like people that review Lego or Transformers or other toys or video games, you know, that's stuff that's marked as children's content. And so there's going to be fewer advertisers on top of being fewer eyes on those videos. So uh, I, I have not been monetized. I was monetized very briefly back in 2017 for like a period of eight months or something like that. I only made $18 on the site. And based on the site rules, you have to make at least 100 before you get paid. So I'm never going to see that 18 bucks because when they changed the criteria for actually being monetized on the site, I didn't, and I did not meet that criteria, that money is just now sitting somewhere and I'm never going to see a penny of it. Although I guess considering I didn't earn 100 bucks to begin with and that meant I couldn't get paid to begin with, I guess I never really earned that $18, whatever. It's whatever. I don't care. It was just an experiment to see if maybe I could make it in the monetized space. I couldn't. I'm fine with it. I don't you. I don't. I've never done YouTube to make money. I've done YouTube because I like to do YouTube. I find it fun. I like making videos. I like making videos so much that I've now chosen it as my career path. That's what I'm going to school for. That's the reason I have to take such a break from actual stop motion work because I'm at school trying to learn how to better do that stuff. So, so yeah, so if I upload an Ninjago video, you guys are not going to see it. Well, I mean, you, you, can, you can watch it, but you, act, you have to actively hunt for it. And that's the frustrating part, is that you're going to have to actively hunt for it. So now more than ever, 
it is very important to follow me on my social media accounts because every time I upload a video, I post it on Twitter. That's basically all I do on Twitter is it's just it's just an update for when my video goes up. So um, the link to both my Twitter and my Instagram, which I'll talk about in a moment, the, both of those are in the description below. They are always in the description below um, up until a, cer a certain point. Like if you go through my backlog of videos that I it's like the, my Instagram and Twitter are not in a video from, say, eight years ago because I didn't have either of those then. I'm not even sure they were around that back then. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm fairly new to a lot of social media stuff because I'm old at this point. I'm 21, almost 22 years old. <laughs> I'm, kinda, I'm kind of the old blood at this point, but uh, I'm not good at any of this stuff. But it's uh, So, yeah, it's going to be important for you to follow me on those sites. And if you're, say, below the age requirement to be on those websites, which technically there is, when you sign the terms and conditions, usually it says you have to be at least 13 or older, if not actually older than that. Sometimes it's 18 or older. Um, I think maybe that it's like that on on Twitter. I could be wrong, but people never pay attention to that stuff anyway. Um, but you know, if you want to abide by the law and you're not old enough to actually be on those sites, you know, have an account on those sites, then uh, just remember that my upload days are always Mondays and Fridays. Unless it's a and this we and this this year I did not because of the way Christmas fell. But in the past I've sometimes taken Christmas week off where there there have been no videos during Christmas week, um, depending on what day Christmas falls. This week it was a Wednesday, so I did not take it off. I uploaded videos on Monday and Wednesday as per the usual. Um, I think I uploaded a video on that Monday. Yes, I did because that yeah yeah because yeah that Monday before Christmas is when that I did the best Lego TV show video. So yeah, uh, I did upload a video that Monday. So I will always be uploading on Mondays or Fridays, and there are very very few exceptions in which I will take a week off. If I do decide to take a week off, then the then the Monday of that week, um, yeah, usually it's usually the Monday of that week. I will post on Twitter it's like, hey, no videos this week. I'm taking a week off to kind of rest and get some, and get some videos ready to be released in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, here's a playlist of stuff you can watch that maybe you've missed or something like that. I usually do stuff like that, so you can follow me there. Um, another uh, and and you'll get constant updates every every week on the regular. So uh, and then another place you can follow me is on Instagram. I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff on there. So uh, I might be working on filming a new scene for a new video, and uh, and I'll post a picture of it and go, hey, look how production on this project is coming, and you can. And you can see, kind of get a little glimpse into the process of how that of how that works. And then um, that's pretty much it for my social media, because you because YouTube is technically a social media. Everyone kind of forgets that, but it is it, because it's a video. Of, you know, people think of it on, in terms of like Netflix and stuff at this point, where they think of it as a, a streaming service, but really it is a it is a social media platform. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a new age that we're entering here with COPPA and everything. And the fact that you guys just are not going to be getting the notifications for these videos. Um, cause as of, as of I'm recording this, I now have a fourth of the finale for Bionicle Reiterated done, which will be launching soon. Um, in the, in the, in the, like the first quarter of 2020, I've got the, I've got the first, the first episode of the four episodes that I had, you know, I, the finale is only four episodes long. I'm debating on whether or not I'm going to make it a movie or if I'm going to make it a, you know, a season. I'm leaning more towards movie at this point, but I don't know. It could go either way. I'm going to have to see how it plays when it's all stitched together. I might decide to do a season after all, in which case it'd kind of be a, for you Ninjago people out there, it'd be kind of a March of the Oni situation where it's a four episode season. Um, so, you know, those would be released back to back to back in, you know, in four weeks. Um, but regardless of how I release it, um, that is going to be coming soon. You know, I've got a teaser trailer that's going to be going up in two weeks. And then uh, there will be a trailer after that that will announce the official date once it's in a state that I think is complete enough to where I can announce a date. And then it will hopefully, probably, most likely be released on that date. So that's so that's, so that's going to be the first big, big content drop for me in 2019. Um, of course, because it's Lego and it's geared towards kids, you guys are not going to get notifications for when that is going to launch. Um, 
So the first couple weeks of releasing stuff, it's going to be interesting to see what viewer retention is and what and just what views in general are because as I because as I was was talking about earlier with kind of getting you new Ninjago people on board for my channel, there was a reason you guys are here in the first place. Is that that is that that first top ten video I did back in April, it I just got lucky with it. I totally got lucky with it. I it, I appeased the the bot, you know the the whatever robot controls the stream of videos in the recommended section. I titled things just right. I guess I put just the right tags in there or I uploaded it at the right time. It's There's so many random things that go into releasing videos on YouTube where you think, oh, this is really good, and then it does nothing. But then you put out a... But then some people can put like a, a 30-second thing of, of their baby babbling to a popular song that it's it's not actually on beat or anything it's just a baby but it's like ooh it's singing in air quotes or a dog saying i love you or something and that gets 6 billion hits within the first 48 hours because i i don't know the bot liked it or something it's it's all it's all kind of a mess so and now it's going to be even more of a mess because you're not going to get notifications in your subscription box or or push notifications or whatever because it's kids content and so it's and uh, oh and also at the same time comments are going away i forgot to mention that and that's kind of a big thing comments are going away um, i think the like and dislike buttons are also going away on those videos at the same time it's super strange it, that, that they're removing all of these features on on those type of videos i understand why they think it's right because they're going to try to remove like the the toxic trolls and people that prey on children but um it's it's super weird, so I'm gonna be so I'm gonna be curious to see how everything pans out with that stuff because I got lucky with that top ten video, but I with the way things are going, it's gonna be very very difficult to get lucky. Of course, I've kind of had this little thought in the back of my mind about how maybe YouTube has been talking about this stuff all wrong, and actually this could be the dawn. Of, I I doubt this. I'm going to preface that I highly doubt this, but I could see it happening just because I think it would be really funny, and I think because YouTube is so bad at this stuff, I think it is possible. <laughs> but I think this could actually sort of kind of be the dawn of a new age in terms of kids content on YouTube, because sure our comments may be gone, sure our notifi sure notifications on the main site may be gone, but who knows? Maybe because these videos are marked for kids and they may have a bunch of views on the main site proper, they're going to get pushed to the YouTube Kids app and really being start to be advertised heavily on there. And then and and then kids are going to find find the channel uh, our channels through that and then they're going to be subscribing there. And so while they're not commenting on the videos, while the creator won't be able to see likes and dislikes, the views could potentially be through the roof, and they're getting a whole bunch of new subscribers, and actually, their monetization is fine. So, YouTube hasn't said anything about compensating for this by making sure videos are pushed through the YouTube Kids app, but I mean, I think it's possible. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's strange. It's it's a whole brave new world we're entering. It's going to be the the first like six months are going to be incredibly rocky, and they're really going to I think set the tone for how things are going to go. Um, that being said, I don't plan to give up. That's kind of been the whole point behind this video is I do not plan to give up. The only way I would ever at at this point I said like I said I would give up on YouTube is if I just don't have the time anymore. You know, because because I have a family or something, but like I'm gonna have a family anytime soon. That's like ten plus years away if it ever happens. Um, so if I don't have the time, or if like some sort of like if I die, well, I'm definitely gonna stop doing YouTube if like I die in a car wreck. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. But hey, you never know. St that's life. It happens. Um, life uh, finds a way. And then. And then also if like if I loot like if there's a and again one of those life happens stuff happens like if there's a fire or something or a tornado I live in the Midwest tornadoes are pretty frequent I'm in the middle of tornado alley um, if a tornado comes and just takes away all of my stuff it's like the house and everything with it is gone I would have to start from scratch at that point I'd pretty pretty much be like okay YouTube 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 is done I've lost too much it there's I don't really know how to start from start from scratch with a lot of the stuff if 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 I am going to continue YouTube then I'm really going to have to 
kind of kind of rethink of what it's going to be this 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 go round. Um, but that's not stuff. Yeah, that's that's I, that's the thing. You can't predict that stuff happening, but it could happen. But it could happen. But that's the thing. I'm not planning for any of that to happen, so I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to quit, even if my views drop to almost nothing. Um, I'm still going to be trying to push videos out through Twitter and stuff. I hope you guys will stick around. Um, I really do, because you guys are the reason I do this. You know, the, I tried to. But this is this is the point I was trying to make back when I was talking about trying to one to be the the next like Spugus do or pizza movies or something. Um, but I didn't get around to it. Is that the reason the, the reason I wanted to be one of those guys is not because I wanted to be popular. Is because I want to entertain people. I think when you hear about directors or actors talk, you know, in Hollywood, that's uh, you, you can tell who the special ones are because they said because you know they'll say uh, the, there's a podcast out there. It's it's I think it's pretty much done at this point, which is unfortunate. But um, Rob Paulson's Talking Tunes, where it's it's uh, just look up Rob Paulson on IMDb. You're going to see a slew of animated shows he's been. You're going to go, oh, I know him from that. I know him from that. I know him from that. I know him from Jimmy Neutron. He's the voice of Carl Weezer. Uh, he does. He did a podcast where he talks to all these different voice actors, and so many of them have close to the same story of why they went again into acting and how and it shines through of how down to earth they are. Is that um, and now, now knowing the point I want to make now, this is going to sound more egotistical. So I'm just not good with words. But hopefully, you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Is that they? Is that they say? Is you know they say you know when that when I was in a school play and everyone and everyone laughed and I and I immediately got addicted to acting because I made people smile. I made them happy. I all I, I always want to try to make people happy. And that that's me. I want so you can see <laughs> you can see how maybe that could come off the wrong way the way I was explaining that. It's like, yes, I'm like that too. See, I'm super humble, but no, that's that's not what I'm that's not what I'm trying to say. But I'm just saying I like to entertain people. I've always liked to entertain people. I've always been a storyteller. I like to tell stories and entertain people through that. I like I like people to be happy. That's uh, that's another driving factor for why I started Bionicle Reiterated why I started Ninjago the, doing these Ninjago videos when I realized they were catching on is because it makes people happy. Bionicle G2 ended in such a disastrous way that if... And Reiterated doesn't have a, to, a ton of views. When you count up all the... When you count up the view count on all the episodes, it's probably somewhere around 5,000 views for the entire series. But individual episodes, it, it, go, it goes up and down. It's like, oh, here's like 300 and then it goes down to 150 and then here's one that goes up to to 275 and then this one dips down to 98 it's something like that i don't care even on the lowest viewed episodes 98 people watched that episode and by golly i hope it made them happy i hope they were a bionicle fan that was super bummed out when g2 ended the way it did and they watched it that and they went oh that was much better i feel better about that now that's all i want that's all i want from that show and i think that i think it's been doing that in spades even even just from the voice actors that I've been talking with, uh, for, that are on the show, you know, sending them the scripts and then them coming back and going, "Wow, I'm feeling all sorts of emotions, and I'm, I'm really glad that this is going to be a, a thing. So many positive emotions coming from this. This is so much better than what we actually got. The fact that I'm just making the voice actors happy. That's all. That's all the reward I really need. And so that's all the reward I need from you guys that enjoy the Ninjago videos. I like talking Ninjago. It's fun. And I'm glad you guys like me talking Ninjago. I, I'll talk about pretty much anything I like and hope that you guys watch that. That's why I do the occasional movie review. I plan to do more movie reviews this year, but it didn't pan out. I did a couple near the beginning, and that was basically it. But um, that's that's why I like doing toy reviews because it's like I, I'm 20, almost 22 years old, and I still like toys. Sue me. I'm 12 years old at heart, and I'm, hopefully I'm always going to be that way. But I like toys. I like talking about toys. I, no, I like recommending toys. It's like, hey, I think this toy is cool. If you like toys like these, this is a good toy to get. Lego, Transformers, blah blah blah, whatever. So, yeah, I don't plan on stop. Uh, I, I don't plan on stopping, especially since I've been at this. It's gonna be 11, 11 years because twenty nineteen was was my full tenth full year of doing YouTube. Twenty eighteen, uh, December fifteenth, twenty eighteen marked my official. Um, 10 years on YouTube because that was 10 years to the day from when I created the channel and this was and so then and so then uh, 1215 
2019 was the start of the 11th year. So I'm officially at the at the beginning of my 11th year on YouTube. You don't I I don't feel like just throwing away 11 years of stuff like that even if I'm not the most successful YouTuber out there. Um, even in uh, esp- not I was about to say not even especially in the Lego community there are people that are way more well known and popular than I am. Even in whether it be in Ninjago videos, I mean you have people like um D Tanaglia um there's the the marvelous Jan on Twitter. He doesn't necessarily have YouTube v- views, I don't think, but he's he's got a very heavy Twitter following, which is awesome to see. Uh, but uh, again, if I can if I can just make people happy, then even like five views on a video, that's going to be worth it, and it made them and it made people feel good. So that's why I keep doing this. That's why I'm not too concerned. I'm I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm not going to lie. I'm concerned, but I'm not too concerned about Kappa. So. Um, yeah, this video has been going way longer than I thought. It wasn't very concise. Um, I'm going to put a timestamp in the comments, that, or not in the comments, but in the description. That'll say when um, when the actual COPPA discussion will talk and maybe kind of try to plot things out of how to actually make this, make kind of look at the, what I talked about and rambled on about for almost an hour and kind of make little, um, little segments out of it. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, that'll be it for this for this video. Um, this is going to be the last video that it's going to go up in in the year, actually. Yeah, yeah, in the year, because like I said, Wednesday Wednesday is the first. Wednesday is the first. The day this is going to go up is the thirtieth. So this is going to be the final video for the year. Um, it's been a good 2019. It's been a good 2019. 2020 looks rocky in terms of stuff concerning YouTube, but. Um, Boy, I have so many cool things in the pipeline that I hope some of you guys like. I've got other stuff I'm considering that I'm weighing. Um, I'm, of course, planning on doing more Ninjago content. That's a given. Um, I'm not going to promise, but I am hoping that I'm going to do like one a month. Again, I'm not promising. I'm hoping I'm going to do one a month at the very least because, like I said, those videos take time to make on top of all the other stuff I work on and there's, of course, school and stuff. So hopefully there will be... There will be one one a month. I hope I hope I just said a moment ago that I was saying once a month and uh, and not one one a week because I would de- I can definitely not make one a week. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, uh, de- definitely shooting for for one a month at the very least. Uh, maybe maybe more if I come up with a bunch of ideas. But um, yeah, so there so I'll have those. Um, you will be getting. A release window for Bionicle reiterated the finale soon, um, and then there, and then at some point in the early to you know midwinter, you'll be getting a full trailer that'll have the actual date when I ha- when things are more along. And then of course I've got my new series that I'm working on. Uh, I'm surrounded by the makings of the set, uh, the the sets that I use for filming and the figures and everything right now because I'm about to get started on that again in the next day or so and finish up that first season and then it's going to be back to the search for new voice actors to work on the show and stuff like that and uh and so it's i'm I'm very excited about it i'm very very excited about it and i hope some of you out there especially people some just to give a hint some of you that have maybe been around on the channel for a long time um hopefully those of you that came into the channel watching one thing and then i pivoted away from it hopefully you guys are gonna like what I'm working on. So that's all I'm going to say on that. I've probably said too much, but um, at this point, it's so far along. It's not something I'm just going to throw up my hands and go, ah, you know what? It's not working out. I'm going to cancel it before anyone knows about it. It's far enough along that it's definitely going to be a thing. So yeah, so that's, that's exciting. I can't wait to unveil that. And I've been going on way too long at this point. So I'm finally going to end. So remember to like me, um, blah, 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 blah. Like me. I remember to like me, people. <laughs> okay. Messed that messed up my little end there, but hey, we end we end on a joke. We end on a joke. That's always fun. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are always in the description below. Especially remember to follow me on those now, um, because of the whole copper thing, as I talked about earlier. And then while you can, while you can, people, leave a comment down below. These may be the last comments I get on the majority of my videos for a long, long time. So please leave a comment um, down below with maybe things you think I could do to to get the word out. Um, oh yeah, that w- that was something I'm going to talk about. I don't know. I may uh, I may 
maybe this okay maybe this won't be the last video of the year i may put because this could be this is really a whole another separate topic that i may broach um so so uh i i don't know I don't know. Yeah, that's an idea. So I'm definitely ending now, but um, the, the day you're watching this when it's uploaded is the 30th on Monday. Be on the lookout on Tuesday. There may be another video going up before the end of the year. And that will be the last video of the year because that's that's uh, it's a potential alternative alternative to, to YouTube stuff that um, I've been considering, but I don't know what um, the reception would be so that's something that I would definitely need to uh, to gauge so yeah there may be another video go going up like late Monday or Tuesday so be on the lookout for that but um, if I don't see you guys again for the rest of 2019 have a happy new year I'll see you guys in a year take care <laughs>